Today, I'm gonna to talk about three key qualities that all hot yoga teachers must have, must possess to unlock their success. And when I say hot yoga, because I'm an expert in hot yoga, it really applies to any type of yoga teacher. And by far the third one's the most important. So make sure you watch the video all the way to the end. And I'm not just saying that so you can watch the video to the end. The third one is by far the most important. Number one, you have to know what you're teaching in and out, the sequence, the postures that you're teaching, so it sort of goes two parts to this. Let's talk about the sequence first. If you're a Bikram teacher, that's pretty easy. You should know the 26 and two. If you're aspiring to teach Bikram yoga, you probably already know the sequence, but that's not a given. I still do 26 and two trainings, and I did one a few years ago, and the person didn't know the sequence. And I said, well, I cannot give you the certification if you don't know the sequence. And they said, oh, I know the sequence. I do it every day. Well, that's great when someone tells you what to do, but now you have to tell them what to do. So you have to know the sequence. Now the Barkin world, I've added a few postures. We have like 41 poses and I have two classes. There's the Barkin method hot yoga class, the Barkin method hot vinyasa class. That's a little more difficult. It's a little more complex as far as understanding the sequence, but whatever the sequence is that you teach, if it's the Ashtanga basic series, if it's a vinyasa class, you know you're just making up poses. You have to know your sequence when you come into that class before it even starts in and out. Before I give you the next tip, make sure to hit the like button if you're enjoying this video. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing and hit the notification bell. You want to learn all about hot yoga, tutorials, flows, factoids like this video, make sure to hit the subscribe button and the like button right now. And not only do you need to know the sequence, you have to know the postures from beginning modifications to advanced amplifications in and out, inside and out. Bikram always says you can do my class no matter how old you are, how sick you are, whenever you are in your life. Okay, so let's say somebody comes to your class that's 90 years old. They can't balance for one second on one foot. What are you gonna do then? What if somebody comes in that's blind? I've had somebody blind in my class. What are you gonna do when someone comes in with a one arm? What are you gonna do when someone comes in that's just coming off knee surgery? You gotta teach them differently. You have to know the modifications you can offer. Now, let's say you have somebody that's more advanced than somebody that's, you're gonna teach that advanced person differently you're gonna teach somebody on their first day. So there's amplifications that you can add and offer to those students as well. So if you're doing a teacher training program, you don't want to just memorize a script and what they call in the Bikram world, the dialogue. You have to know those postures in and out. You have to know when to offer modifications. What if somebody comes in that's pregnant? There's a whole modification for prenatal that you should understand and know. In the Bark and Teacher Training Programs, we go over it tooth and nail. We go over beginning modifications to advanced amplifications. And if you're interested in taking a Bark and Method Teacher Training Program, we have live trainings and online trainings. I put links down in the description below. We'd love to have you join the family. But understanding if you're gonna, whatever teacher training program you're gonna choose, you gotta make sure that they're very, very tuned to detail to then supply you with the information so you understand what are you gonna do with that 90 year old person that comes to class. So you can understand what are you gonna do when that person comes off a of knee surgery? They can't do the toe stand. You should not be telling them to do the toe stand or that person that's 90 years old. So here's a sidebar for this first part. Here's a great modification that you can offer students that are having difficulty balancing. Now, let's say we're doing a posture like standing head to knee and they can balance for more than five seconds, not even five seconds to save your life. If it's a little longer than that, then I wouldn't mess with it. I just have them continue to do the pose and they continue to work under balance. I was working with one of the greatest football players of all time, Dan Marino, coming off his Achilles tendon surgery and he couldn't stand on his foot. So I had him use the wall, a modification that Bigger Man taught me. So when you're using the wall and standing head to knee and a standing bow, you want to go to the side. So let's head into the studio and I'll show you what I mean by using the wall. Whatever leg you're standing on, let's say you're doing the right side standing head to knee, the left leg should be against the wall. She should be facing that other direction. And now it's time to switch legs. You're going to turn around and your right leg is against the wall. So your hip is touching the wall, not your shoulder. Your shoulders are free so you can extend the leg out. Now let's look at standing bow. Same thing, if you're picking up the right foot, your left hip should be touching the wall as you kick back, not the shoulder. The shoulder should be free from the wall. The left hip touches the wall as you kick back and reach forward. And then when it's time for you to switch sides, just turn around and go to the other side. So your hip is touching the wall. You gotta get your leg very close to the wall so you're not leaning too far over and that's how you can start gain balance and pretty soon this is all this is also a very important thing about modifications you always want to check back and see do you continue to need the modifications maybe you don't need to use the wall try balancing again see if maybe after a week or two don't use the wall and see how you can do there's a good chance your balance has improved. When I was working with Dan Marino, in a very short period of time, I got him away from the wall. He had enough strength in his standing leg that he can balance without the wall's assist. 
Now, on the flip side of that coin, here comes somebody that's really advanced. You're going to be teaching them and you're going to be addressing the posture to that person differently than a first day person. For example, hands to feet pose, the fingers coming underneath the heels, a modification. Now somebody that has their legs straight in this pose, they want to cup the heels from the back. She's cupping the heels from the back, therefore, because she doesn't need to bring the fingers underneath, that shortens the hamstring. The point is to, to this first step, this first key essential quality is knowing the postures inside and out from beginning modifications to advanced amplifications, not just spewing out the words to the class in general. You have a true understanding and depth of what you are teaching. Number two, be an expert communicator understanding how you're communicating the information in class is the key you don't want it like I said before you don't want to be spewing out words and they call into Bikram world dialogue to your class every day repeating the same thing in that repeated pattern in the same cadence on a regular basis because the students are gonna tune you out if you're just on this what I call autoton, especially if they know what posture is next they really don't need to hear you you're just sort of guiding them along it becomes elevator music at one point, they're going to want to strangle you. Just stop it! Instead, what we have to do is change it up. And this is what we work extensively on in the level one teacher training programs in the Barking Method, and especially on the online as we get into more advanced techniques, is learning how to find what I call your conversation voice. So what do I mean by conversation voice. When we're teaching in class, especially if it's a 90 minute class or a 75 minute class, you need to have a teacher voice in order to get through that time. So especially when you're doing transitions, like for example, half moon pose, arms overhead, interlace the fingers, index finger released, reach up and over to the ceiling, reach to the right, push your hips to the left. That's a teacher voice. And we do that to get into the cadence. We do that to get to the energy moving and flowing. And we have a good, strong, projected voice. But now when you're in the pose, this is what I talk about a lot in my teacher training programs. You've got to find the gem. You've got to find something that's one of the most important parts of the pose. It doesn't have to be the most important part. What's an important part of the pose? And now explain or communicate that part or communicate that point to the class in the conversation tone and an authentic voice. I'll give you an example. So here I'm going to go from teacher voice to conversation voice. Here we are in half moon. We reach up and over to the right, hips to the left, chest out, arms back. And when you're reaching to the right, what happens is your left heel wants to come off the floor because you're reaching to the right. It's just physics. So push that heel into the ground. Push your left heel into the floor and that's going to propel you over to the right. You see how I sound it. I change the cadence. You can hear a contrast in the tones, what I call this in my teacher training programs, variety of tone. You gotta sound differently at different times. Here's another Jimmy Barkin phrase that I sort of coined. You gotta let your voice reflect the moment. So when we're in a strong warrior energy, your energy has to be strong and solid. When we're in Shavasana, the energy is different. It changes. When we're in our teacher voice for transitions, we're strong and powerful. When we're in a communication voice, we're changing the cadence. Just how I see how I did that. I'm changing the tone. So you're pushed down into that left heel. That's going to get you over to the right side more. Don't let that heel come off the ground. And then you can go back to your teacher voice. Reach over. Push a little bit more. Exhale and come up. Now I'm my teacher voice again. So we have this variety of tone, which will bring more dynamics to your classroom. It's going to make you more interesting and a more effective teacher, more effective communicator, and definitely help to unlock your success. And key quality number three, once again, I promise the most important one is you have to exude your passion. You gotta let the passion come through the words, and there's nobody that did this better than Bikram. All the bad press that Bikram had in his personal life and all the things that happened in his teacher training programs, you can't deny his passion that came through in his teaching. That's what made him famous in Beverly Hills, in my opinion. It wasn't that he was so tough on everybody, that he was always this disciplinarian. He was gonna kick your ass, and he was a disciplinarian, but he had passion coming through his words. When you're in the class, and it becomes infectious. So when the passion is what they call, in acting they call it the subtext, when it's behind what you're saying, it changes everything. In the old days, only the most advanced students were even allowed to teach, and one of Bikram's most advanced students of all time, I won't mention his name, was one of the most boring teachers. He re his passion really wasn't teaching yoga, his passion was doing yoga. So when he was teaching it, arms overhead, 
Push your hips to the left, bring your arms to the right, 90 minutes of this, you just want to shoot yourself in the head. I'm going mad. There was nothing behind what he was saying to fuel his words. His passion wasn't fueling his words. So that's what we have to find. What's your passion? Like I said, there was nobody better than that than Bikram. I hope that's what I exude in my classes as well, is to bring that passion through and put all your attention on making a wonderful class and teaching the students that are in it. In our online teacher training course, we have live sessions, so you're not just on your own. So every Thursday night at four o'clock Eastern time, we have a Zoom, live Zoom meeting, and people chime in from all over the world. People log in from all over the world. It's really cool, from Iceland, from Australia, from Switzerland. Here we are in gallery view, and we check in with ourselves. So I asked them a question a few weeks ago. I said, what is your intention? What is your main intention when you're teaching in class? And most of them, because they've been around me so long, they pretty much answered right away and they were correct. And the answer was to put my attention on the students, to make that my intention, to give them the best possible class that they can do. And how can I do that? I can help by correcting them. I can help by encouraging them, not just so that I'm teaching a great class. My intention isn't so I look so great that I'm shining in the spotlight, that I'm actually shifting the spotlight over to them to get them to be the best they can be. And in my class I'm very encouraging to my new people and I also challenge my advanced people a lot of times and I say this in my class the more sarcastic I am with you is because when I'm sarcastic with you is because I'm expecting more from you so when I'm tough on you it's actually the best sign if I'm really nice to you that's not really a good sign or it just means you're a beginner but this last this third essential quality is key Bikram used to say the average yoga teacher will last about five years. So why does that happen? Because it's really not their passion. It's not really what they live and breathe and eat. So when you can make this not just your passion, but your obsession, when you're obsessed with the craft, you're obsessed with the postures, with help getting your students to the best they can, learning all about your craft. And I'm assuming that you are, if you're watching this video, that you are very serious about becoming a better yoga teacher, then the passion is going to fuel your energy. And it's going to unlock your success. People are going to be drawn to it. Now, here's the key. Now, here's something that's really interesting. When you start to find your authentic voice, like the second essential quality, and you bring the passion together, it can be very vulnerable because when you're yourself, when you're authentic, when you're not just trying to act like a yoga teacher, but you're being yourself in that room, people may reject you. And that's why a lot of people don't do it because it's vulnerable. You have to get over it. The most successful people, there are critics all the time. I mean, look at Taylor Swift. She's like the number one iconic pop star right now of our generation, or at least in the last five years. And so many people dislike her, but look at those millions of people that come to see her. So when you're authentic, when you're putting yourself out in the spotlight, you're gonna get rejected. People aren't gonna like you, but that's okay. You gotta have a thick skin. Bikram used to say, put on a hat with spikes on it. So if someone steps on your foot, they'll break their foot. That was his advice when I moved to Florida. We're sitting in the car in Wilshire Boulevard. Put the hat on with the spikes. If someone wants to step on your head, they break their foot. So let's sum it up. Key number one, you have to know your sequence. You have to know the postures from beginning modifications to advanced amplifications to be an expert on communicating. There's a great organization called Toastmasters where they teach you how to speak in public. I suggest you do that if this is something you struggle with or take my teacher's training program and I'll help coach you to find your own authentic voice and be the best yoga teacher you can be. And number three, let the passion fuel your words. Let that be the subtext behind it. The passion will fuel your energy, fuel your class, and unlock your success as a yoga teacher. I guarantee it. So that's our episode for today. Thank you so much for watching. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing. Hit the like button if you enjoyed this video. You want to learn all about hot yoga, factoids, classes like this video. Hit the like button, subscribe button right now, and I'll see you the next video. Bye, guys.